Hello you dirty potters! How are you today? In today's video, we're going to be reviewing a more economic wheel than the last ones that we reviewed. If you're new to the channel, because we've we've grown a little bit in subscribers since last time we made a video like this. Quite some time ago, I released a video on the very first wheel that I suggest you buy for yourself. The issue with this video is that those are not economic wheels. All of those wheels are in the thousand dollar ranges, and some of them are very expensive, going up to sixteen hundred dollars. Imagine you're a new potter and you decide to try this art out for the first time. You have to have a lot of resources. You have to have time, you have to have money, and you have to have space. And a lot of us don't have just like a thousand dollars chilling around so that you can test out a wheel. So naturally, a lot of you started asking, well, what about those more economic wheels that we see online all the time? Are those any good? And today, we're here to answer that question. So in today's video, we're going to be using and reviewing the GCJX-008 from the Vivor company. It costs a little under $200, and we're going to see how it kicks up today in comparison to the last video that I made. I was fortunate enough to get my hands on one, to play with it for a little bit, and I'm going to tell you my experience, the goods, the bads, why you should or why you shouldn't buy one. Before we start the review, there's a couple things I need to go over. If you don't want to go over these things, click this timestamp right here and you can just go straight to the review. And if you're super impatient, which is unfortunate for you because ceramic artwork is a very patient art form, so you're, you're kind of you're, you're kind of already losing the race there. But if you really just want to hear my immediate opinion, you want to get to the end of the video, you just want to know what I'm going to say about this wheel for its final words, go to this timestamp and it'll take you directly to the end. Just remember to leave a like on the video to confirm your impatience. It makes me happy knowing I was right about you all along. Firstly, I want to give a huge shout out to the Vivor company. They are the ones who sent me this wheel. They contacted me on Facebook, said, hey, will you review the wheel? I said, yes, sends it on over. I played with it for a bit. A huge, huge, huge shout out to them. All their links, and I think they might even slip in a discount code if you want to get one of these for the upcoming holidays, if you know what I mean, down in the description below. This way you can have a little bit of extra cash in your wallet just to make sure everybody gets what they need. The second thing is that although the company did send me this wheel, I already have a pre-arranged agreement with them that I would give you my honest opinion on the wheel, my likes and dislikes about the wheel, so none of this is gonna be a dishonest review. This is gonna be a 100% from my point of view, what I see good, what I see bad about the wheel. So it's not like I'm gonna fluff it up just to make it sound real good, I'm gonna tell you my honest opinion on it, and I've already told the company that, so this is a good to go. On top of that, at the end of this video, I will be giving this wheel away to one of you beautiful subscribers. All you have to do is all the YouTube things, you have to like, subscribe, comment below, and already click the bell. This is generally not only just for the algorithm, but also this is a good way to track you. Like, I don't, if you click like and you didn't subscribe, like, it's very difficult to track you. <laughs> so I'll be commenting on your comment, say whatever you want down below, and if I comment on yours, we'll hook up, we'll link up, and I'll give you this wheel free of charge, I'll even pay for the shipping. That'd be so messed up if I made you pay for the shipping after I gave you a free item. It's like Oprah, like, oh, you got a car, you gotta pay the taxes on it though. And the last and final thing before we get to reviewing this beautiful wheel is that I'm gonna be comparing this wheel to the experience of my wheel that I have in my homestead here. This is my wheel. It's fairly old, I paid $400 for it. The wheel head is made of plastic, the foot pedal is made of a hard plastic, while most newer and more professional wheels are made of uh, usually some type of steel or aluminum, and they're they're made of metal, essentially, right? I have wires hanging out mine. Mine is made in the time where they made wheels bigger, and they didn't have proper gulches or proper catches for water and clay. They just had this weird little drain hole on the side. I just don't think it's very fair to compare a more economic wheel like this for underneath $200 to a brand new near $1,000 Brenton Model C. I, I, just, I just don't think that's fair. And the closest thing that I have to approximate that is my old used wheel right here. Although, I am still making bangers on this wheel over here. Okay, now that we got the fluff out of the way, let's start the review. Today we're reviewing the GCJX-008 from the Vivor company. Here are the specs, and a quick potter tip for you, whenever you look at the specs, there's a couple things you're looking for, especially for any wheel that you're buying. I just want to throw this out there. A lot of people look at the speed and kind of equate that to the power. They are different. You're looking at the horsepower or the power instead of the speed. The reason for this is because most potters aren't going at the speed of sound with the foot pedal all the way down unless you're centering and even that's not necessary. You're almost never going to go max speed on a wheel unless you are a literal pot god. But when you're looking at the specs of a wheel, the power is far more important. My wheel over here, because it's older, can only handle about 15 pounds of clay 
before the physical force that I'm pushing down on the wheel cannot handle me anymore. So the wheel stops turning. The amount of power it gives out is essentially equivalent to the amount of torque it's giving. And the more torque, the more power it's gonna give when you're putting pressure on it. I just wanted to put that out there real quick because a lot of people ask me what the difference between speed and power is. And while they do have a bit of a relation in like the physical world, when you're looking at a wheel, you really wanna be looking at how much power it has because the speed is almost non needed at its max level for the high majority of us. When I first brought this wheel into my studio, I noticed that it was extremely, extremely light, especially in comparison to other wheels. This is a good thing just for me in general because it's very easy to put it on counters, to put it in different places. If I ever wanna bring a wheel to my friend's house, have a little throw party, I know that sounds weird, but it does happen where you do have to move your wheel around from time to time. It's not like you're gonna put it in your house and it's gonna stay there forever and ever. So I was kinda happy with the fact that it doesn't weigh that much. Also, I was extremely happy to notice that when I opened up the package, the wheel was already put together. I thought for how inexpensive this wheel was that they were gonna send it to me on a bunch of parts and I was gonna have to put it together myself. You know, like Ikea. Ikea is cheap because you put together half of the stuff yourself. You're doing most of the physical labor. This was something that I was extremely worried about when I opened the box and it didn't happen. I just pulled it straight out of the box. Another super nice thing is that when you buy this product, it comes with not only a splash pan, sometimes they don't. It sounds weird, but sometimes they don't do that. <laughs> and it also comes with a set of free tools and a free apron. This is really nice for someone who's just getting into ceramic art because you're essentially buying a wheel, right? And then you have to go out and buy an apron. You have to do research on what the better apron is. You have to do this, you have to do that. Then you have to do the same thing for the tools. Right? You have to figure out which tools you want. Why is this tool dark brown and why is this tool package light brown? Is this a difference? Are they? But they're both made by Kemper. Why is one cheaper than the other? I don't understand. There's some free floating tools over here. Do, do I just buy the ones that I need? Which ones do I need as a beginner? You don't have to think about any of this. They just give you a package to try out. Granted, they are not the most high quality tools. I'm not gonna lie to you. And the apron is not the most high quality apron. It's not like a clay apron here but it is extremely nice that they give you this trial package just so you can find out what you like instead of just being told, yeah, you have to do this. This is what we're all gonna do now. You get to decide yourself after using this essentially trial kit. As we get deeper into the box, I noticed that the foot pedal is made of plastic. The high majority of the wheels I've worked with are usually either hard plastic or metal. And when I say plastic, I mean plastic. This is not the hard plastic. Like my wheel here is made of a very hard, almost metallic plastic. This is not that type of plastic. I also noticed that the foot pedal has some grips on it. I, I enjoyed this. Um, most foot pedals, even if you looked down at the one you might be working on right now, has some type of like sandpaper or grip or pattern on it. And I was really excited that they put this on there because again, anything that matches uh, a more professional standard is exciting for me for a wheel that is this inexpensive. For less than $200, they could have been like, nah, screw it, I don't know, we don't, want, we don't need to put it on there, it's not very expensive. But they went through the trouble of putting these patterns on there just for the grip of your foot and the comfortability when you work. As I took the wheel out of the box, I noticed a couple of things right away. Number one, this is a very small wheel. The wheel head itself is only 11 inches wide, which granted is not a very large issue. For someone like me, I think mine is about 15 or 16 inches wide, just the circle itself. This is not a huge issue in general. It is a smaller wheel head, but unless you're making plates all day long and you're like, oh man, I really wish I had three to four more inches on my plates, it's really not that much of an issue. The high majority of us are making things that don't have feet that are so big that they go beyond 11 inches, unless you're making an extremely big plate. Even super big, nice pieces like this don't have a foot that goes beyond the wheel head itself. So the fact that it's a small wheel head isn't really an issue at all. But as I open up the package, I do notice that the wheel itself is very small. Here's a side-by-side -side of my wheel versus this wheel right here. The top-down view and the side-to-side -side view. Top-down view looks like it's about one-third the side of the wheel that I have in my house. Granted, my wheel was made a very long time ago when they valued space more than they valued the functionality of the wheel and the quality of the wheel. So this might be about half the size of your wheel if you have something like a Brent or something like that. But even when you compare this to today's model of wheels, this is still a very small wheel. It's not just small lengthwise, it's also small height-wise. Here's a little video that I really wish I didn't have to show you of me trying to sit at this wheel on my stool. Notice how my butt is basically at or above the wheel itself. 
the high majority of wheels that you want to work with, you want at least your belly button or the bottom of your stomach to be at the wheel. This is for comfortability when you're throwing, which is very important and it saves your back. You don't want to throw way down here like this and have to lean over too much. This is going to hurt your back after a while. You also don't want it too high because it's going to burn out your shoulders. The high majority of us would find it very uncomfortable to zombie make our work like this and work our shoulders and burn out our muscle for over an hour straight throwing. And because of that, most wheels are going to start a little bit above your hips or where your stomach essentially starts the bottom of your stomach. Just so that you can put your arms down and it reaches that length for most people. This was an issue for me in this wheel. I essentially had to find a brand new chair because my stool doesn't change in height. So I had to get a stool or something that was smaller than my actual stool itself in order to make it comfortable. And even then my arms are flared out so that I can reach the wheel head. This kind of made me think maybe it's not meant to be put on the ground. So I decided to put it on my workbench, which is about the size of my hips and height. I put it on my workbench, but again, the problem of having to do this as I throw occurred. So it seems the company actually thought about this beforehand and put extensions on the feet. You can very easily unscrew the feet, heighten them, kind of slot them out, screw them back in, and they get a little bit more height. My issue is that they don't get enough height to fix one of the two issues that I have with how small the wheel is. I do get that it's underneath $200, it's not gonna be a larger wheel with more materials. And this is super nice, I liked this a lot. I like that you can extendo the legs for a little bit. Granted, it only gave me maybe about three, four, if I'm stretching it five inches of length when I decided to put it on the ground. So the problem with me putting it on the ground was still kind of an issue, a little bit more comfortable, I can kind of reach it, but it was still a bit of a problem. So I decided I'm gonna put it on the countertop. But again, I had to do one of these because I have a table that's about hip height and the wheel is about this big, of course. So even when I stood up, I had to do one of these. So that left me with the option of either getting a new table, spending more money essentially, and getting one at the perfect heights where I can just sit down on any stool I want, measure it out, and sit down comfortably. Or what your boy had to do was find a stool that I have in my house for literal three-year-olds and sit down at the wheel and throw. I did it for the content. Don't laugh. Don't laugh. Are you serious? Don't laugh. I did it for the content. So for the rest of the video, it should be noted that I am sitting on basically a child or very small person's stool. I did it for you. Okay, I did it for you. I did it for the content. You better be clicking those YouTube buttons right now if I had to sit on this stool. As we sat the wheel down on the ground to throw with, I had to look for the power cord, and the power cord was very easy to find. It wasn't super finagly, it wasn't like three different cords wrapped into one thing. This seems like something that you'd be like, yeah, of course, why would they make that difficult? You won't believe the amount of equipment that I get that makes the operator just pull their hair out by like, oh, attach this cord to the adapter and the adapter goes to this and this goes to that. No, there was none of that. You plug it straight in, it three prong has a grounded and it's good to go. The one thing I do note about this though is that the cord is relatively small. Me personally, I like to have my wheel head around the corner from any electrical sockets just in case water gets into my electrical sockets. I don't like that, right? No, well, no one likes that, but I personally don't want that in my household. So I prefer a longer cord. If you got this wheel, I would suggest that you get some type of extension cord. There's two buttons on the side of this wheel. One is the power button, and the other button is essentially the direction button, right? So the red button gives the wheel power, and the green button turns the wheel on a certain direction and off, and, and then, and then on another direct. It goes, it goes both ways. This is fantastic for this wheel because if you click the button from green, middle, and then the bottom green button, just click it all the way over, it spins the other direction, making it very easy and accessible for left-handed people. I know that's a very strange thing to say, but when you meet a left-handed person who throws on the wheel, they, they love these types of wheels. My wheel doesn't even do this. Now I did put this wheel through a throwing test, but as I started to throw on the wheel, I noticed something very interesting. Most wheels, especially if you hadn't had any experience with any wheels, have this type of texture, where there's these lines that denote certain amounts of space. So like some wheels have inch lines apart, some wheels have half inch lines apart. This wheel has those lines on top of added texture to the wheel. Hopefully you can see it in this video right here. It's a little bit hard because it's a very shiny brand new wheel. But these textured lines I have never experienced before. The high majority of wheels, especially the higher end wheels, 
that I've ever worked on have all been very flat and smooth. And this is for good reason. Number one, it, you don't feel any texture on your hands when you're throwing. Your hands will often touch the wheel head. And number two, the stickiness of the clay really sucks down to the wheel head. It's very, very easy on a flat surface and a flat surface, especially when there's a little bit of moisture involved. The only issue that I seem to have with these texturized lines on this wheel, the Vivor wheel, is that whenever I put my clay down, there's extra space in between the clay and the wheel head itself. So here's the clay, right? And here's the wheel head, and here's the texturized lines, right? You put it down, there's little pockets of air and space left in between the clay body and the wheel itself, if you don't slam it down hard enough. The high majority of us potters, whenever we put our clay down on our wheel, we, we slam it pretty hard. If you don't slam your clay down hard enough on the Vivor wheel, it has a difficult time sticking. I threw, a, I think, a three pounder on this, you'll see later in the video, and at one point, it comes off of the wheel. I didn't throw it any special way, I didn't give it any special treatment, I threw it exactly how I would throw it on my normal wheel. And the only thing that could come to mind is, oh, I must have not been able to stick it hard enough because the texture has lines. It doesn't have enough contact with enough surface area to stick because there's so much space left in between due to that texture on that wheel. Granted, this isn't necessarily a bad thing, at least in my mind, I think they put that texture on there so it would grab onto the clay more, but in my experience, that's just not the way it seems to work. On top of that, you have to think about the future process. For example, when I tip this upside down to trim the bottom, I'm gonna have that texture on the very lip of the cup if I push down a tiny bit too hard. And when I take the pot off of the wheel, I'm still gonna have that texture on the bottom of the cup if I don't decide to trim the bottom of my cup at all. I would have to get pretty lucky and take it off of the wheel of my wire tool just right in order for it to not have that texture come across in my finished product. On top of that, I would use a bat, but I didn't see any bat pins on this wheel. Granted, for $200, you're probably not gonna get holes for bat pins, but I, I didn't see any holes, and I know there's always that one guy who's like, I'm just gonna get a drill and put them there myself. Don't do that. Don't do that. If I've been there, don't do that. Even when you do the old measure twice, cut once, doesn't end up good. Just, just doesn't. As I started to throw on this wheel, I used one, three, and five pounds. If my wheel can handle 15 pounds, this thing should at least be able to handle five. So I threw one pound. Success! success. I threw three pounds. Success. success! I threw five pounds. Success. I bet this thing could probably handle up to seven pounds without giving me any trouble personally. And I'm a hard center. Like I, I slam my clay down, I push it, you know, especially if I have stoneware clay, it's a bit more give to it. I'll usually just rough house with it. And generally speaking, I, I think this wheel can handle that amount of clay. Also, I'm hard pressed to find a situation where you would throw anything beyond maybe a vase or a very heavy teapot, where you would have to use more than five pounds of clay to begin with. The only, and I really mean the only scenario in which you would probably need more than seven or 10 pounds, because let's face it, most of you are learning how to make cups and bowls and plates and teapots and things of that nature. The only situation in which I can see you needing to handle more than like five to seven pounds of clay at a time is if you're trying to make things that are vase sized or larger, in which case you might need a more professional wheel and that's only because I think you might burn this wheel out a little bit. Granted, I've been working with it for about a week or two at this point and I, I think it's doing fantastic. I'm handling three pounds, I'm handling five pounds, I'm really giving this wheel a go and it's working out for me. But I don't think most of you, especially if you're thinking about buying a wheel of this caliber, are thinking about handling more than five pounds of clay at a time. There was, however, one major issue that I had with this wheel and it's not an issue that I don't think most of you have to worry about. As I was pulling the three and five pound cylinders, and again, I wasn't trying to make anything, I just wanted to see if I could pull a cylinder, and I wanted to see if it could handle the roughness that I would give it. The wheel started to move to the side. For those of you who've never been on a wheel before, because I imagine there's some of you who, who just wanna get something in your hands so you can test it out, see if you like it, you've probably never even owned a wheel or been on a wheel, or even for those of you who have, actually know what I'm talking about, you'll pull a cylinder and you usually have to put some amount of pressure or force in between the cylinder and your body. So you're kind of crouched down pulling. As I was pulling, the wheel itself, the whole wheel started to tilt this way. 
This is because generally as you pull, when you get better at throwing, you'll start to pull a little bit this way because as beginners pull, they tend to kind of pull out and make this large flare. So the more experienced of us over time have learned to kind of pull inwards to keep a straighter cylinder. The wheel did not like this. <laughs> the wheel started to move its, I'm, I wanna see if I can find a clip somewhere. I don't know if the camera was on, but the wheel moved almost any time I pulled more than three pounds. It wasn't when I was centering. It wasn't when I was wedging. I did wedge on the wheel a bit. It wasn't when I was doing anything else. I even formed a couple pieces. It was only when I was pulling. And I don't think this is something that applies directly to most of you because I'm a 230 pound uh, perceived male and like I, I have larger shoulders and I'm relatively strong in comparison to a lot of people who would buy this wheel. I don't think the wheel was made for that type of pressure and I don't think most of you when you're pulling are gonna have this issue. But I just, in case there's a monster out there who's buying this wheel, I just wanna point out that that did happen to me a couple of times. Now that I've played with the wheel for about two weeks, let's lay out the pros and cons of this wheel. Number one, it's fairly accessible. It's really low priced for what you would expect for a wheel that functions this well. Secondly, it comes with a package of tools, including an apron, which weirdly enough is a blessing for some people. Some people can't make decisions. I'm the kind of guy who just like, if I'm a beginner, I go into a shop and just buy the first set of the crappiest tools because that way I can kind of learn why they're bad or why they're good. They do that work for you. This, it, this seems like a strange thing to mention, but some people really do have a problem with making a decision. They've already done it for you. The wheel has leg extension, so if it's not large enough for you right now, you can very easily add about three or four inches to that height if need be. It's relatively powerful for most people's needs. As I said before, most people aren't throwing over five pounds of clay on a wheel, especially if they're buying something that is on the beginner level, such as this wheel. It can handle a fair bit amount of clay in comparison to your needs if you are a true beginner. It has a setting where it goes to the right and goes to the left. This is a very strange thing to a lot of potters, such as myself, but at this point, I'm an old head potter where I'm like, oh, I used to use wheels back in the day that only went one way, which is true. But now that we have more accessibility towards technology and it's a bit cheaper to make it go for left-handed people as well as right-handed people, it's, it's suited for literally everyone. If you're left-handed, you're gonna like this wheel, especially if you're a beginner. It's fairly light, easy to move and put away. This is fantastic for people who want to put it on some type of ledge. They want to take it to a friend's house. They want to do a demo with it. It doesn't take up a lot of space in your garage or your house or wherever you have your wheel. This used to be a large problem with corporations back in the day who were trying to pump out wheels and sell them to schools. But like my old wheel next to me, right? I'll put a picture of it over here. This thing has the wingspan of a pterodactyl. And because of that, you could only fit like 10 wheels in a classroom. As they started to make them more compact and take up less space in your living area or wherever you might put it, they ended up putting more and more wheels and making more money. Let's look at some of the negatives. The wheel is relatively small. I know that goes in direct opposition to what I just said about it being so uh, accessible and easy to move on the top, but it is a negative, especially if you are not a smaller person yourself. My wheel is usually at hip or belly button height for me, about right here. So it's fairly easy for me to just reach down and touch it. And if I wanna get more leverage and more power, I can push down. This wheel is far below that, it's around my knees. So in order to get any type of leverage, I would have to push down a lot or get a much smaller chair. Either that or I have to put it on a table. And if all the tables don't match up directly to your height, you're gonna be straining your shoulders all day. This is probably the most negative thing that I have to say about this wheel realistically is because you either are gonna buy a new table specifically for the space in which you would hold this wheel or you're gonna be crutching your back all day long on a toddler stool. And just as someone who's a fairly regular height of 5'10 for a male, it's I have no place to really put this unless I wanna sit down on the ground. Even if I wanted to be a stand-up thrower, Again, I would have to buy a new piece of equipment for the new piece of equipment I just bought. The splash pan. The splash pan is a personal point for me. I dislike this type of splash pan. I much rather have the gulch type, or I would much rather have the type that's just one click on, or it applies to the wheel to the wheel head off, and then you take the other thing off, it would be much better. After you've experienced multiple types of splash pans, you start to have a preference for one. This might be your preference, that's fine. For me, it's difficult to get on, it's difficult to take off, it's sometimes it's made of this weird plastic. I've cut myself on one before. I just don't like them. Granted, this is not so much a dig about this wheel specifically because even things like the Shimpo VL Lite or the Whisper or whatever it's called, 
I've bought one of those before. It has that as well. It's literally the same type of splash pan. And I don't like that one either. And that wheel costs close to $1,000. So it's not a specific dig on this wheel. It's just that this wheel has the type of splash pan that most people seem to find irritating in the clay world, to be honest with you. To go on top of that last point, I tried really hard to get the wheel head off. I don't like that I couldn't get the wheel head off. A lot of, especially those Gulch models of wheels, you could take the wheel head off, clean up very easily, and then put them back on. This is very easy for fixing the wheel if you need to get to the ball bearings. This is very easy for cleanup. I couldn't get the wheel head off. I did try quite a bit. And again, I weigh 230, right? So if I couldn't get it off, I don't think a lot of other people could get it off as easily as well, if not at all. You can most likely send it in if something happens to the wheel head. It's a very strange thing to think about, but my wheel head is made of plastic, so it warps a little bit. This is metal, it's probably not gonna do that, but if something ever happens to the wheel head or you wanna change it out, it's gonna be a bit difficult to do it yourself. You'll probably have to send it off to the company. The final pseudo negative that I'll give about this wheel is the texture on the wheel head. I've worked with a bunch of different wheels. This is the first time I've ever encounter texture on the wheel head. But if you're a new thrower and you buy this wheel, you're gonna just think all wheel heads are like this. I'm telling you right now, the high majority of them are not. And I don't understand what the texture is for. I'm sure there's a good reason for it. I was very tempted to just take some power tools and sand this thing down. And even as I worked with it over the course of two weeks, I noticed it was kind of dulling down a little bit. So the texture kind of didn't bother me as much. At first it was a bit sharp even though it's not a sharp that would cut you it just felt a bit sharp in the fact that it was very very prominent on the bottom of the blades of my hands as time went on and i started working with this wheel a little bit more and more it just slowly doled down so it didn't bother me as much but the question still stands i don't i don't understand like why is the texture there um, and a couple of times because of the amount of stickiness that it had to the clay body and there was extra space in between little air pockets my clay would come off at times it came off maybe about two or three times in the course of about two weeks and for some strange reason i'd like every time it happened i was like why why is this texture here i don't understand you know and at the end of using this wheel and at the end of this review something dawned on me something that throughout the entire testing of this wheel among the one and a half the two weeks that i've been testing it should have been very apparent as it was staring me right in the face. This wheel is not for somebody like me. <laughs> this, this wheel is 100% not for somebody like me. This wheel is for a smaller person or a child, which by the way is a fantastic price. It's a bit underneath $200. I would give it a three out of five because it definitely does the job. It handles the amount of clay in which you would have to make functional wear or some type of production work, right? It's very light. The biggest problem I have with this wheel is the fact that I don't know what height to put it at. I'm a fairly regular height, and if I put it on a table, it's too big, and if I put it on the ground, it's too small, so I have to get a smaller chair. And the entire time I was testing this wheel, I was thinking to myself, this would make a fantastic Yule gift for my daughter when she gets to the age of like seven or 10. It's the perfect height for her. She already has a chair that fits her, right? I'm using it right now. I'm sitting on this little toddler stool thing. It's, it's, it's she's not gonna generate the kind of power I can generate, clearly, she's 10. Right? It comes with a beginner set of tools. I don't have to buy our expensive tools. This will be perfect for a child. For the first type of person, you are most likely someone who is thinking about dipping their toes into the ceramic art world, and you're looking for a fairly cheap or inexpensive way to get that experience in your homestead without going to a studio and paying, like two months at my old studio was $200. For those two months, you could have your own wheel in your own household. So you could wake up in the middle of the night and throw, you can do it while you're watching TV, That'd be kind of weird because you're probably doing it in the living room. The second type of person usually just goes to a studio and they test it out, see if they like it there. This is a fairly inexpensive way. Most of the equipment is there. But a lot of you either don't live near a studio or the studio is extremely far away to the point where like gas, transportation, things of that nature would be an issue. Not all of us have accessibility to that extent, right? I can't even, side point, little potter tip here. This is a little bit of a, uh, you know, meh. There's a large amount of people out in the world who saw a uh, great pottery throwing video or they saw something on TV or they saw something on YouTube and they fell in love with the magic of, of pottery or they collect ceramic artwork and they think it's very special and very intimate and very meditative. So they think and they have all these perceptions about the art form only to get it and dislike it. It's messy, it's difficult, it takes a lot of physical effort. There's a lot of other things that you need to kiln that you have to learn how to trim, you have to learn how to glaze, that every single one of those things are a separate art by themselves. And a lot of them just seem to think it's a more 
elegant and beautiful process than it realistically is. So a lot of people end up spending a gob of money, oh especially God. if they're in the field of having that amount, and they just let it sit in the corner to rot. There's wheels in people's garages right now, and they'll probably put them on Craigslist when they finally have to move. The second kind of person, and this was staring me in the face the entire time I was doing the video, I can't believe I didn't notice it until maybe a couple days ago, is that this would be a fantastic, and I mean an absolutely fantastic gift for a smaller person such as a child, uh, a seven-year-old, a 10-year-old. This would make a great Yuletide gift. This would make a great holiday gift for someone who really loves the, the YouTube Potter. You know, they, they love the Tim C's, the John the Potters. A little, a little bit of Earth Nation in there, you know It comes with a set of tools. It comes with an apron. It has adjustable legs so that you can add more space on it. It's not something that you're gonna spend a huge amount of money on giving a literal child a professional wheel to see if they like the craft, just so that they can experiment with it to see if they can find a way to express themselves artistically. To give them that option for this price, especially when usually it is nowhere near this price, is an extremely, extremely positive thing in my eyes for the ceramic art community and the future of children who want to hopefully grow up to be adults and still be in the ceramic art community. This is a great avenue. For this specific type of person, I would give the wheel a five out of five. I have a daughter now, and if my daughter comes to me one day and says, Dad, I wanna do what you do, I'm not buying her a $1,000 wheel. <laughs> it's not happening, right? But I will buy her a Vivor wheel, just to see if she likes it. I know there's a high chance that it's just a phase and she wants to copy me because she wants to make me proud on some level, but on the 10% chance that she ends up being a literal genius at the art form, I'm not spending over a G on it, so yeah, there you go. Well, thank you Dirty Potters for joining me today. There are plenty of other wheels that I would love to test. Uh, as I said at the beginning of this episode, I already talked to the company, I wanted to give you my honest review on this wheel, and if I'm giving you the honest review, I think if you bought this for a fully fledged, large, such as myself, adult, there might be some problems with it, but I think it would still be a good buy if you don't really have the finances or space to house a large wheel inside of your homestead. You know, it's fairly quiet, it's really easy to lift, it's uh, easy to transport, you can put it on top of stuff. The only two issues that I really have with this wheel, as far as an adult perceived male, is the fact that I can't sit down like I do on my stool with a regular wheel and start throwing. You have to get a much smaller chair. It simply doesn't reach that height. You might be lucky if you're like five feet tall or four something. You know, it might be a little bit better for you because your arms probably are not as long as the ratio to your body. But I think it's a much better option for a child. For a child, I'd give it a five out of five. For an adult, maybe a three and a half out of five, just because there are some weight issues with it and there are some accessibility issues with it as far as where you would put it to throw. It doesn't really seem to fit anywhere as far as its height goes, unless you bought a table specifically for this wheel. I was fairly surprised that it can handle five pounds of clay. For some strange reason, I thought it's there's no way. For $200, it can handle five pounds of clay. That's one fifth of a bag of clay, right? Every bag of clay is 25 pounds. There's no, it handled it. It handled it fairly well, and I'm pretty sure I can go a little bit higher. Well, thank you, Potters, for joining me today. I know that a lot of people were requesting a video like this because realistically speaking, and I know there's some people right now who are like, well, you just save up for the wheel, right? No, there's some people who don't have access to that type of money. There's some people who just don't have access to that type of money realistically in the world. Not everyone is in everyone else's situation. And because of that, this is $800 worth of wiggle room to bring that accessibility down to a level where if you don't have near $1,000 to spend on a wheel, you can still have the experience of a potter if you want to see if it's for you. Again, thank you, Vivor Company. I really appreciate it. Again, we're giving this wheel away. Remember to click all the YouTube buttons that I mentioned at the beginning of the video. Hopefully, you have yourselves a fantastic day, and I will see you, Dirty Potters, next week. Thank you for your patronage. I really wish <laughs> I wasn't such an aggressive puller because I don't think most of you are gonna run into this problem. That seems like something that just like me, who's just like slapping around clay all day long, just giving it that I gotta stop that, it looks weird.